Welcome to Monday's Special Blend for today, the 15th of January 2024. It is so snowy out there today. It wouldn't feel like it went from <laughs> uh, it went from late fall to the middle of winter in about three days. How's it going, Maria? <laughs> Good morning. Before we get started, let me just say that um, I'd like to do our land acknowledgement and thank you, big thank you to the Algonquin peoples and acknowledge that this is unceded land and thank the Anishinaabe for their stewardship of this land long before we came. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. I appreciate that. So good that. morning. Good morning. Hey. So we've got an well, interesting show today. Well, first of all, can I say something? Yes, uh, yes. You got a big shout out and compliment from the No Borders folks from you, Lynn, and, and the bunch over there for uh, what you did for them last week for the No Borders Festival. They thank you very much. Oh, Good I didn't job, hear about they this. Said. Did they said that to you? Thank you. I, I did, this yeah. is the first I'm hearing of it. They're, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. They're great people. I really appreciate being invited to and they do and this film their show. Every year. Yeah, oh, they do this every year. year, and it's so, 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 so important. So this morning, I know that we have a fun filled roller coaster ride today, and I'm excited about it. Um, but before I get into that, I'd like to give the, uh, our condolences to the families, uh, to the f- two families who, who lost their family members due to a cardiac arrest out in Renfrew County um, due to snow shoveling. And I'd like to warn folks to take it easy out there. If you feel like you're doing too much, back off, go in the house and have a cocoa. Don't kill yourself over a driveway. Yeah, it's it isn't so, worth so, it. so unfortunate. It happens, seems to happen every year, especially when we get these really mm-hmm. big, heavy snowfalls. People are like, the well, I... The said 19 centimeters, but I, I it, think it was more yeah. than that. People, yeah, yeah, people are like, oh, I, I shoveled the snow last year, no problem. I used to do this for the living, and then they realized that, oh, they've, mm-hmm. they've, their yep, heart yep, hasn't yep. had the I'm cardio realizing, that it needs. <laughs> I'm realizing a lot of that mm-hmm. with this hip replacement, let me tell you. I've learned how to crawl on and off my own bed, and I can put both my socks on now. Major accomplishments, actually. Um, and and I'm, I'm feeling a lot stronger, but I did, oh, kind of overdid it a little bit, I have to say. Which is why I'm home again today and leaving you rocking the studio. Yes, well, I, I appreciate that you're here on the phone with me, at least. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's almost like you're here, yes. not quite, but almost. <laughs> um, almost. Well, you know, I have to say that I, I made the mistake of tuning into TV uh, Ontario, the, uh, the Agenda. I love that show. I love that show, The Agenda. Uh, and tonight they're going to talk about two things that really are close to my heart, and one is uh, the AI advancement that they're expecting in terms of discoveries faster in medicine. Oh, I have so much to say about that. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So I think we we should tackle that after we watch that. I'd like to acknowledge the Sens, of course, having won over San Jose on Saturday. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And the PWHL team uh, won their first game over T.O. Yes, girls, keep it up, please. I appreciate so that you th- keep track of that because I don't. That's my little bit of house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 one more thing. January 28th on, on TV Ontario, they're going to have a special at 8 p.m. called Sugar Coated. And I'm one of those people that's had a sugar addiction most of my, all of my life, if you'd look at the size of me. Um, I'll be watching that one. Maybe we'll have a conversation around that afterwards uh, as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sugar is... You a- know... It's 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 in too much stuff. It is in too much stuff, and I'm I'm realizing it now that I'm now that I'm reading labels and and I look at the stuff that you know I'm making my donations to the food bank and stuff, and I'm just looking at the junk food people are throwing in there. Oh yeah, throw in another box of craft dinner. These mm. are people that need to eat. Like, give them something they can make a meal out of. Um, Give them beans, legumes, give them things that are going to help their children grow. We have a real crisis going on right now, and, and i got to talk about my friend Peter Tilly. He's a fellow 
member of Leadership Ottawa, as mm-hmm. am I. And he is the CEO, uh, uh, and and I'm telling you, uh, he, he's he's been doing everything he can at the Ottawa Mission to save souls from dying in this cold. And they're putting people up on the floor in their hallways. I can believe and, it. And this, this is before even the big, hard, you know, minus... 43 and uh, you know stuff happens and and I got to say that the Ron Colbus Lakeside mm-hmm. is a warming and warming and sleeping center it's been open now as a warming and sleeping Ron Colbus Lakeside Yeah that's right so on Britannia need, so like at a Richmond yeah, Road so and people, Carling There's nothing out in that part of town there's nothing I I I've lived in that part of town for for the last 30 years. There's nothing out there. Yeah, so, so for true. Ron Colbus Lakeside to be open is is a big deal. They Very recently renovated, for, so for it's a it's pr- it's going to be a nice place for people. I'm so happy to hear that they've opened that up. I've uh, done yeah. a tour of the area. We actually did a fashion show there a few years ago with my ex, and it was uh, mm-hmm. it's a really nice mm-hmm. center. Like there's a they've got a kitchen. They've got I perfor- a, a yeah, fully I've performed in everything. there many many times. But here's the thing: you and I have both admitted over the air that we have at one point in our lives suffered from lack of housing yeah it's true and that we've had to struggle through and when i came upon your vid on your youtube channel (laughs) and the first words out of your mouth were that's the best night's sleep i've had in a really long time (laughs) and you could tell by the way you said it wow did you ever mean it folks i guess i have to say you got to get to know our nate He's a pretty amazing guy. Um, so that's why I sometimes point to some of his vids, because um, they inform, they enlighten, they show an experience, they share an experience, mm-hmm. uh, they give you peace. Um, there's one. There's another one of his uh, vids that I want to point out right now. Uh, can you put them up? Uh, put a link up for me in in the comments, uh, Nate, so people can go see these. Yeah, sure. The I'll second do that. one. Is, the second one is this ride that Nate took uh, on the LRT. Okay, with the camera in the summer, and it shows. And it's it's a it's a fast forward. It's one of his fast forwards. And and you really take a couple of deep breaths while you're watching this and sit back in your chair. And it's lovely. It, it, it just... Some of your vids are meant to relax. And that's one of them for sure, Nate, because I, I watch that and it's just so relaxing. And if you want to see the current winter one, there's <laughs> a fresh one that you just posted with like last week or something yeah that was uh during the what i thought was going to be the big snowstorm of january that ended up being the lesser oh, snowstorm yeah. of january <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> that, so uh, this morning yeah. this morning i on so so you're going to put the links up for those yeah, all three then please okay all right so this morning we have a major treat in the studio and uh, I'm not. I'm not going to let the big, the big secret go. This is uh, Nate Scott. This is Nate School. <laughs> um, uh, but but I'm just saying, uh, you are in for a very pleasant show today. Well, and if uh, Sheena hadn't, has, if Sheena hadn't asked me to go and film her, I never would have had the opportunity. So I appreciate oh, her. Oh, that's so true. Uh, yeah, thanks, Sheena, for that. That's awesome. So um, the invite went out. He, he, uh, He's he, here in um, the studio now. Awesome. I'm going to step back and let you guys have a good time. Oh, right. And CKCU 93.1 FM, we love you. Well, it was great to talk to you, Maria. Always a pleasure to have you either here or on the phone if we can't <laughs> get you in the studio. Anyways. Bye for now. Bye for now. Thanks so much for being here. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.
All right. So today in a studio, I have a guest. Um, we have um, your name is pronounced Emil. Yeah, that's correct. I gotta turn your mic oh, on. Oh, perfect. Yeah, no, that's now correct. Now we can hear you. <laughs> and you are the, I would say, the manager. Um, kind of uh, describe your position. So I am uh, first and foremost at Yucks, a comedian at Yuck Yucks, and then I am part of the team there as well. We've got Howard Wagman, uh, our owner, who has been running Yuck Yucks here. This is our 40th year, um, and we've got Chris Boris who runs the bar, and then we got Ashley Krachenko who runs our box office as well, and then we have assorted door staff and and team that's there to assist everybody and based on what i heard uh, last week you're the custodian uh, <laughs> yes that uh, that is that is true we all kind of uh, comedy has a long-standing tradition of of being a part of a team at a comedy club and sort of working your way up and and being around the environment and uh, that is that is a true story that i've told from the stage last year about this time i was fortunate enough to uh, to host an open for uh, comedy legend and obviously Ottawa hero Tom Green mm -hmm. and it happened to be a night that uh, I was working the door at the club and Tom being the the gracious individual he was uh, having dinner upstairs after the show called me up to the big table I was very very excited to to go up and I, I sat for a few minutes and and then I was like, Tom, I, I got to get going. He's like, this is the biggest night of your career so far. Where are you heading? I was like, I got to go back downstairs and clean the toilets. So that is that is your glimpse into the glamour of, of Canadian entertainment. <laughs> oh, I feel that so much. I've been in that position with, um, not in the comedy position, but in the custodial position. Sure. So it's really important. And it's great that you highlight the fact that you're a team that you, <laughs> kick the thing, that you work together. And uh, that it's, it's not just... Uh, mm -hmm being on stage but it's a whole it's a whole team of people that make everything happen there that you have to oh, work for through. sure so um last week was i would say kind of like a it's not quite open mic but you called in a bunch of different um yep. up and coming acts and there were different uh, quite a variety of people do you want to tell me a little bit about how that show got started like where you got the idea for it or and how long yeah. you've been doing it so that show has been running for for a long time in various forms obviously there has to be in the arts, there's there's always a perpetual pipeline of, of people who are developing and, and sharing their ideas. The New Talent Showcase is essentially a, a weekly showcase every Wednesday. Uh, we were doing it Wednesdays and Thursdays, but we've actually uh, shifted our Thursday program to extend our, our professional comics. Um, but Wednesdays is what we call New Talent Showcase Night. So it's a mix of um, you know people that have never done it before, people who are just finding their footing um, experienced professionals and veterans of our scene who have you know had things to work on and would prefer to do it on a night that's a little more casual than than mm -hmm. you know on fridays and saturdays the, the the nights where people have forked out some money for for a ticket they, their their expectations are a little bit different so mm -hmm. fridays and saturdays is a little more um play the hits if you will yeah and whereas uh, uh, earlier in the week you tend to work on stuff and, and share your ideas and, and see sort of what sticks can can evolve into polished pieces and and what maybe doesn't land with an audience hmm. and uh i used to live in the area and i do remember when the, it went from just being an italian restaurant to all of a sudden there's a yuck yuck sign there do you yeah. remember exactly how long ago that was uh it was just over a year it was september of 2022 that we opened that location so um obviously most people probably re remember the location on elgin street mm -hmm. uh, and during the first closures of the pandemic um, the restaurant above the club uh, went uh, bankrupt and unfortunately the owner of the property wanted to move on to, to a different leaseholder. Uh, so the club had a sublease from the restaurant mm -hmm. and, and so by extension we, we weren't able to continue on there and, and because of uh, the pandemic and the on again off again relationship between public spaces and all those things the club kind of bounced around for a little bit until we found a more permanent home at Biagio's mm -hmm. and and it's a really it's a special room it's there's got to be a certain feel in places like that uh, you know a lot of comedy clubs or or small music venues you can sort of feel years of success and failure on the walls. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a weird thing to say. A lot of people are like, oh, it's so dark and the ceilings are low, and it's like, but that's where people come. There's still that subversive element to to comedy and music and art, where 
you know, people come to hear things they may not always hear or see in other places. So it's been a really great fit. Obviously, having our host from Viaggio's is great because the food's great there. Yeah. And the people are great. And it's just been this wonderful relationship that's kind of taken off. And it's a really it's a permanent home. And it's it's not far from here. It's just over on Richmond Road. Um, it's really it's been a special place for us in a short period of time. Yeah, that's right off of uh, where Lincoln Field Shopping Center. That's correct. Kind of is or used to be because yep. it's been a construction site for a couple of years now. It's a uh, it's a really nice area, but uh, I it's been a while since I've been to that area, and I never actually went to Bellagio's before yeah. until last weekend. You say it's uh, like a Wednesday; people aren't expecting much, but I would say there was a pretty good crowd out there. Well, there, there the was, first time. yeah. It, if the Wednesdays and Thursdays do particularly. Um, well, the tickets aren't expensive. They're only $8. Uh, a mm-hmm. lot of times um, we have local folks giving away tickets to the event to make sure we have people there. Um, and and we're so lucky here in Ottawa. Uh, our scene, I would put our comedy scene up against any comedy scene, truly anywhere. Uh, the amount of talent that's come out of here, you know, you look at the, the Jeremy Hots of the world, Norm MacDonald, uh, Tom Green, obviously. Now we have Aaron Belial. Sophie Buttle came out of Ottawa. Um, mm-hmm. There's just John Doerr. There's so much talent coming out of Ottawa. There's so many people who are just such great writers, such great performers, and just genuinely funny people. Yeah, I feel like uh, people sometimes give Ottawa a little bit of a rap as being a boring town, and yeah. I feel like to myself that that means that they haven't really gone out and looked to see what's here. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunity, um, especially, like I said, from our comedy scene. It's as strong as there is anywhere. I've been other places. I've had the good fortune to do some performing in other places, and, and the people I get to perform with here are as good or better than anywhere else I've been. Well, speaking of that, how did you get into the scene? Like, uh, it's got to be a int- little bit of an interesting story, I'm sure. Yeah, it's it's a funny one. Um, I think the base origin story is probably the same for a lot of comedians. You start off being the funny friend or the funny <laughs> coworker or whatever or the funny teammate. Um, you know, and for me, I was always that person, but I always also had a, a, a firm grasp of the work that went into comedy and the reality of having to write material and polish material. So... Mm-hmm. I never felt that there was a direct link between those two things just and there was there's some fear and trepidation there and and one night I I originally obviously I'm from Toronto so um, I was out at a a small comedy club there on a Saturday night and uh, you know I I went in and I saw the folks they had and I'm not going to say what the club was or who the acts were but I left feeling like if that was their Saturday best, I could maybe do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I kind of committed to some time in the next year doing an open mic and giving it a shot finally. And I went home and sat down on my couch, watched the late hockey game on CBC and jotted down five minutes worth of material and told all my friends, I'm going to do an open mic finally. And all of them showed up and it went really well. But even after that, I, was, I thought to myself, you know, making your friends laugh is easy. We yeah. already know them. So I didn't want to put too much stock in it. Uh, and I really knew that there was a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a, a benchmark of making strangers laugh. Mm-hmm. So uh, once I was able to do that, I tried it a couple more times. I was like, wow, maybe this, maybe this is a thing. So I just kept showing up at open mics. And then you start getting, you know, it's a progression. You, you mm-hmm. work later in the week. So you start on a w- Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all the open mics, indie shows, all that stuff. Wednesdays they start doing the open mic amateur stuff at clubs and then you graduate someone sees you at the club and says, oh you're okay maybe maybe you can do a little opening spot on Thursday okay <laughs> and then it's oh that was pretty good would you like to try hosting on a Thursday okay and then it becomes oh maybe you could do a Friday Saturday in front of people who have paid money to see you do this we now trust you enough to make those people laugh so um, it, it's a very steady pace uh, it usually takes a long time. Obviously, every artist and every comedian is different. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have people that have been doing it for 10 years who are kind of in that slot of they're comfortable doing open mics and they'll do a five minutes here and there once every month or two. Uh, and then we have folks who um, I mentioned Aaron Belial. He's been doing it for a year. He was already a finalist on America's Got Talent. Um, he got a golden ticket from the Kill Tony podcast with Tony Hinchcliffe, which is like gold as far as it now means he can go anytime they're doing a live show anywhere in the world Mm -hmm. he can call them and say i want to do a spot they've only given out a handful of those wow um so you know 
my journey to this point's been five years. Someone like Aaron's taken a year. Um, you know, some people that just have that extra level of talent and work and effort and all of those things, um, it really just matters where you are in your process at the right time. People underestimate just how much work it is. You have to be an onstage performer. You have to be charismatic. You have to be able to roll with it. You've got to be a writer. You've got to be able to think about ahead of what you're going to talk about sure. next and kind of be able to gauge the crowd. It's, it's, it's not just like standing up and making a few jokes for your friends. Like It, it takes a while to get to that pos position, I would expect. Yeah, and you cannot underestimate like most opening spots like when you first start your open mics and all that stuff generally they range from like three to six minutes um cannot underestimate how long six minutes with a microphone and a spotlight is when it's not going well uh, yeah. six minutes is a lifetime when it's going poorly and and even if you're experienced there's times where it it just doesn't go well uh for whatever reason you don't have it you're a beat off you and the crowd aren't a match um, you know, I find most of my material being a little on the dark side is generally more geared to success in a club environment. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when, when you're in a rural area at an independent show at a, at a bar on a Sunday night, not all of those people are necessarily to hear, they are into hearing things that are on the dark side and it's your job to either win them over or make the best of a situation if you're not their favorite. And sometimes the longer you do this the funner that second scenario gets where they're like oh they don't like me let's see how we can make mm -hmm. this fun for me <laughs> instead of them yeah sometimes uh people will uh, go to a show without looking up who they're going to see ahead of time and be just sure. like I'll, I'll pay 20 30 40 bucks for a ticket and i'm gonna enjoy it i'm and then they find out, well, no, the, you don't necessarily have the same uh, ideals as the person you're sure. seeing, and you might completely disagree with it. I know one of my uh, favorite people in the comedy scene that I haven't been able to actually see in person yet is a guy named Steve Hofstetter. Yeah. He's yeah. come to Ottawa a few times. and Legendary for his crowd work in heckler he, interactions. Exactly, exactly. So many times people come out to his shows and they have no idea who they're going to see and realize that, oh, these weren't the jokes for me. <laughs> yeah, and, and that sort of, we end up in a situation sometimes where um, we have to, educate people on on like club and show etiquette mm -hmm. um you know understandably it's an art it's subjective not every idea is gonna resonate with every audience member uh sometimes there are gonna be things and on our gauge is the laughter mm -hmm. like inherently to comedians every subject has something funny in it no matter how sad or awful or whatever it happens to be as a as a baseline um, but our gauge is finding the things in that that are funny and relating them to an audience. And that's our sort of um, success or, or punishment, if you will. If we tell a joke and it crosses somebody's line and they don't laugh, that's the punishment to us. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. we want you to laugh. We want you to think our idea on any given subject is funny. So um, we sometimes have to educate people, too, that, um, you know, in clubs, okay, it, it's fine if you didn't like it don't laugh if if you don't like a comedian's entire thing it's okay to stand up and and walk out uh what we don't want you doing is is interrupting the show and and causing uh, a disturbance for the people who are enjoying it exactly. right it, it's totally exactly. okay to have whatever opinion you have you don't you didn't like it that's okay but but take yourself out of the situation versus uh, making your opinion the overriding opinion for the room and and disrupting an entire show that other people have also paid to enjoy very true. You mentioned already um, uh, Tom Green and some people like that from the Ottawa scene. Who would you say kind of inspired you? Who are some of the uh, comedy legends that you really enjoy watching? I, I think, you know, for me personally, um, I've always enjoyed uh, more of the storytellers, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and some of those people that can have... We have a thing in comedy called uh, laughs per minute or jokes per minute. Um, a lot of people try and, and because windows can be so short on how long and how many minutes you have in your set, um, you know, people really want to hit you with multiple punchlines and, and what have you. For me, I've always leaned towards um, more of the storyteller, um, you know. I think you'd be hard pressed to find anybody that didn't list George Carlin as as someone who um, resonates with him because he had this amazing gift to to share stories and ideas and you could have these long 
silences in the audience mm-hmm. and then he delivers this monster punchline or idea that makes people stop and think and have that reaction of oh my god I, i'd never thought of this it's so funny to me that that this is now being presented to me so i've always really gravitated towards people like that or people with misdirection um one of the people i really love that's working now is a guy named anthony jeselnik um very much material is much darker uh than than most as a baseline but quite a bit of misdirection he'll start telling the story and then the punchline uh comes from far off in the distance in a, in a place that you didn't see coming in a lot of cases and and that to me is is something exciting in comedy that makes me laugh nice very nice i appreciate you sharing all that uh do you have any um thing you want to special um highlight that's coming up that uh that's you're working with or people you like are working with or yeah we so we just have great shows week in and week out at, at yuck yucks uh so wednesday like i said is new talent showcase night um thursday friday saturday are now pro shows all the way through the weekend saturdays typically we'll do especially in the winter we'll do an early show and a late show on saturday night um it's literally every weekend yuck yucks.com slash ottawa west mm-hmm. uh you can get all of that Every show we have, typically the the social media account, our Ottawa Yuck Yucks uh, Instagram account, will tag and post all the comedians. Obviously, uh, for us, a big part of being booked in other places is people seeing our online presence. So um, that's always a great favor to comedians. If you saw someone you liked, hop on Instagram and and follow them. Uh, It's a great opportunity for them or or producers to see them and say, okay, there's some engagement here. Uh, We could sell some tickets based on this person. Uh, At the end of the day, while comedy is an art, most art is uh, monetized at this point. So for for comedians to continue to be able to work and and make a living, um, being able to be booked on gigs based on that social media presence is important. Yeah, everybody has to eat, and you want to be able to have a house with warmth in it, too. That's absolutely correct. We, <laughs> we all love and, and for us, aside from, from the working part of it, we just love being in front of an audience. It's, mm-hmm. it's fun for us. We've all done weird shows in weird places where there wasn't anybody but the other comics in the room. And, you know, even during COVID, we found different creative ways. We had some great... Uh, a pair of local guys who are comedians and also produce an indie show that because we couldn't do shows inside they were doing shows outside in the alley adjacent to the venue they were working in uh, they were called the dumpster shows because <laughs> they were out in the alley by the dumpster that's great that's great um, that's a great idea you know we we did shows in a park uh, just mm-hmm. anywhere we could go just because we love sharing the ideas and making people laugh and and you know inviting people into our our craziness that's great. Um, definitely uh, put the links to the Instagrams in the awesome. show notes. And um, if anybody wants to follow you, your comedy Emil E M I L E. That is correct. On Instagram, is there anywhere else they should follow you, or just go that's, there? That's and the place I use the most as, as a cat in my mid forties. Uh, it's uh, I'm sort of maxed out on effort with one social media channel i i have them all for reserve purposes but that's the one i tend to use most. i feel the same way i uh, that my youtube is my one and uh, i've got a bunch of others i don't have the tiktok i used to but it was just like no i don't want to i don't be here the the algorithm for tiktok is utter chaos it, yeah. like you click on one thing and that's your life for the foreseeable future and um it's tough when, when you've fallen down a rabbit hole of a subject you're not interested in. You're like, what is this? You click on it, and then forever that is on your feed for life. You can't get away from it. You can't escape it. It is, uh, yeah, chaos is the way I would describe the TikTok life. Yeah, I feel like I'm uh, half the videos I watch on YouTube, I click the three dots. Don't recommend this channel anymore. I, honestly, <laughs> I wish you could do on that the TikTok, TikTok. So you Well, you can. You can? You can. There's a not interested button, but it yeah. doesn't matter. It doesn't work. No. They, It'll it, find 10,000 people that are similar 100 percent how that works oh, yeah. that's so annoying all right so it's been great to chat with you i should have asked you early but do you have any song or anything you like to play or anything like that uh, uh it might be a little old for most of your demographic i uh being a child of the 90s i'm a big pearl jam guy they're my favorite band uh, so if you have any by all means let her rip uh, <laughs> i typically just play them from online services so if you've got a specific song uh i'll take anything I uh, I am just a big fan. I'm one of those weirdos that travels to shows and, and likes to go see my favorite band. So um, I'll take anything. They've got a great 30-year catalog of, of good old-fashioned rock and roll. 
Well, the first one that comes up is the one that probably everybody thinks of, Even Flow. Hit it. Might as well play that. All right. Well, it's been great to have you. I thank you so much for coming Thanks into the show. Thanks for having me. For this is great. I, yeah, I really appreciate it. And you'll have to keep me in touch uh, with uh, upcoming stuff, and I'll add it to my things to talk about on Monday morning for that would upcoming be great. events. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Little Delta kind of thing. Oh, we're going to do another one. That was Susie Vinnick and Tony D, Home on the Road show. If you take a look at the show notes on ckcufm.com slash playlist slash whatever, just click on the, on the, um, the shows and you'll be able to click on Monday Special Blend on the programs. You'll get a link to that video. I should play that off of their YouTube channel. And if you go to click on it, you'll be able to see the show, full show is 42 minutes long. Definitely worth checking out. Well, we're coming up against the uh, hour here, and we'll be finishing out the show very shortly. I just want to thank you again for being here on the show. I've been your host, Nathaniel Newton. When we're broadcasting live from the CKCU FM studio at Carleton University. If you have something you think that we might be interested in showcasing on our show, something related to the city of Ottawa, something, anything music or activism, artists, uh, special interest about the city of Ottawa or the surrounding region, get in touch, leave a comment on the page or send me an email. The link will be in the show notes. And I will be happy to get a hold of you and see if we can fit you in. We're always looking to showcase things that are happening in the city. And uh, anybody that's doing something good for, this, for the city, who's uh, trying to make this world a better place and doing local good. Anyways, that's our show. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm going to play a random song that was stuck in my head again. And this one is 15 years old which for me is a long time because I remember when it came out and this is a remix of a song from a video game Xeno Gears I know that's weird but whatever I love this song and I've loved it for a long time and it only has 15,000 views in 15 years so you probably haven't heard it anyway thanks for being here at work going to end the show with this and won't be able to play the whole thing because there's only a minute and a half left anyway thanks anyway and we'll be back again same time next week How do I love thee, CKCU? All right, that's it for this week. Thanks for being here, thanks for watching, thanks for listening on the radio if you did that, and be back again next week. Forgot to turn on the autofocus. Such is life.